everyone. Good evening, and thank you for joining Medical Channel Asia's online webinar, Doctor on Call, the Cardiology Series. I'm Jia Yi, who will be your MC for tonight. Today's session is the last session out of a series of three cardiology webinars, where we have invited three doctors over three weeks to share more about their expertise concerning the heart. Today's event is proudly organized by Medical Channel Asia, your one-stop solution for her Asian health information. Make sure you check out our social media pages. We are also grateful for the support of a few companies that helped make this webinar series happen. Firstly, we have Zoll, whose focus is on providing medical products and software solutions that facilitate life-saving care every day. Some of their products that you might not notice, but are actually around you every day, will be their AEDs. They also have other innovations, such as the hospital wearable defibrillator, which detects abnormal heart, life-threatening heart rhythms and gives immediate treatment. This device is available in the hospital for those who are warded and may be at risk of cardiac arrest. Every minute matters. Check them out from the site in the chat. Next, we have Stratgeist, a digital marketing consultancy that empowers brands to achieve their maximum potential on social media. We thank them for helping us create those wonderful posters and collaterals that you see on our Facebook page and registration link for this event. Then there's roads.sg, which stands for Respect Others and Drive Safe an interactive online community where the focus is on road safety, bringing awareness and positive change to all road users. And hopefully everyone can stay less angsty and not get too high a blood pressure. And lastly, SG Healthcare Heroes, an online community which started out as a collection of Singaporeans who wanted to show their support to their healthcare heroes through their illustrations during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. They are 8,400 people strong now, so feel free to join their course. With us today, we have almost 100 attendees dialing in from across Southeast Asia. Thank you to everyone present, and I'm sure this will be a fruitful and engaging session. Our special guest and speaker today is Dr. Julian Tan, who will be sharing more about the risk factors, preventive measures, and treatment options for ischemic heart disease. As we are living with COVID-19 now, let's also learn about how COVID-19 affects the heart and why patients with heart diseases should be more careful in this pandemic. Dr. Julian is a pioneer in interventional cardiology and is highly qualified in treating patients with heart diseases, including the most advanced forms of vascular, coronary, heart rhythm and heart muscle disorders. Outside his medical practice, Dr. Tan is also active in medical education, serving as a lecturer and has published various peer-reviewed journals. So without further ado, Dr. Julian, please. Hi, uh, thanks Jay and uh, Clara for, for this opportunity to share with the uh, general public on uh, a matter close to my heart, uh, no pun intended. Um, okay. Let me try and share screen now. Okay, so again, my name is uh, Dr. Julian Tan. I'm a uh, cardiologist uh, working out of uh, uh, several hospitals here in Singapore, uh, predominantly at Farrah Park Hospital, as well as at uh, Mount Elizabeth Hospital at Orchard Road. Um, but before uh, I even begin the presentation proper, I always like to keep things a bit lighthearted. Uh, so just a little introductory video on, on my practice and myself uh, before we begin, okay? Hi, my name is Dr. Julian Tan, and I'm an interventional cardiologist, and I've been a doctor for 21 years. I have been in private practice since the year 2015 and set up this solo practice in the year 2018. The cardiology practice is a specialist clinic that manages all aspects of heart disease. 
My subspecialty is in interventional cardiology, which involves not only in the diagnosis, but in the management of all ailments of the heart. We interventional cardiologists often refer to ourselves as plumbers because we are in the business of fixing blocked pipes, i.e. the blocked coronary arteries of the heart. When I was a little boy, I remember accompanying my pediatrician father on his early Sunday morning hospital rounds. I was a first-hand witness to how my father provided comfort and healing to the sick. It was then that I truly appreciated the privilege of being a doctor. I remember distinctly this relatively young gentleman, aged 40, with a young family, who came in with a massive heart attack. He was literally at the brink of death when I first saw him. But fortunately, we were able to salvage his dire situation and save his life. It is moments like this when I'm able to return to this young family, their father, their son, her husband, which gives me the greatest satisfaction. I've always wanted to be an actor since I was a little child. But my wise mother discouraged me from pursuing this dream because it tam In Hokkien, it means you can't make a living from it. So I guai guai followed in my father's footsteps and became a doctor. But I've always had this love for acting. And throughout the years, I've been involved in theatre work in one way or another. My side hobby is in driving sports cars. I often drive up to Malaysia to enjoy the open roads and to hear the growl of the engine. The adrenaline rush I get from driving these cars is akin to the adrenaline rush I get from performing plumbing work. One advice I have for you is that you should go for a proper heart health screen, especially if you are male above the age of 40 or female above the age of 50 and if you have the following risk factors. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or if you smoke. Okay, yeah, thank you again for uh, indulging me in this uh, little introductory uh, video. Don't worry, I won't be talking about my cars and my acting. I will be uh, focusing on the heart. Uh, so yes, so I, I come out of this uh, private practice. I've been around in the private practice since 2015. And, um, and like I said, I have uh, two clinics, one at uh, the cardiology practice, which is at Farrer Park Hospital, and the other at uh, Mount Elizabeth Hospital. Okay. So these are my credentials. Uh, this is where I had my many years of uh, studying and, and rigorous examinations. Um, and uh, this is my uh, very work experience, both locally as well as uh, overseas. So the main topic that we're going to talk about today is this big, long medical word called atherosclerosis, um, which is basically a precursor to coronary artery disease, which is uh, what I'm going to talk about. So this is a schematic diagram of your coronary arteries. Uh, if you cut it, you cut it cross-sectionally, you can see that when you're born, the inside of your artery is uh, nice and clean, but over time there is buildup of plaque. Uh, plaque is, think of it as the, the sticky, dirty stuff that gets stuck on your teeth. Similarly, this is the kind of stuff that gets uh, stuck onto the inner lining of your arterial wall. And over time you get this uh, very ugly little pimple, so to speak, where a blood clot will form here, and that's where you get a heart attack. I think it might be easier if I showed you an actual uh, three-dimensional thing here. So you can see this is uh, a cross-section of your coronary artery. You can see inside is nice and pink. Yeah, that's when you're born with. But over time, uh, you get built up of uh, dirty stuff or plaque. Uh, if you smoke, you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, all this plaque gets built up. And over time, it comes to a point in time where you have uh, uh, quite a significant amount of yellow plug that lines the inside of the coronary artery. And this is the end result that we all want to avoid from happening, where a blood clot forms inside this small passage. 
uh, suddenly, and that's where you get a heart attack. Okay, I'll explain a little bit more uh, as you go along. Uh, so another schematic diagram you can see over time, plug builds up. Uh, and then when you form a blood clot in this small space, suddenly then you get a heart attack. Okay. So what are the symptoms that one needs to look out for uh, if you think you might be having a heart attack? Of course, the most common symptom is that of chest pain. And oftentimes the pain associated, associated with a heart, with the heart, is uh, we often describe it as a heaviness or congestion feeling behind the chest here, behind the sternum here. Um, oftentimes you can't really pinpoint to a spot. It is very like a very vague uh, crushing sensation behind the chest. And it's often associated with uh, breaking out in cold sweats. And some people might even have jaw aches or arm aching. So that's, those are classical symptoms of a heart attack. Okay. Uh, in men and the feral sex uh, usually differ in terms of their symptom presentation. Men usually have the classical ones, chest pains, breathlessness, uh, arm ache, jaw pain. Yeah. But women, sometimes can present with heart attacks by head. They have very vague uh, symptoms, like a sense of anxiety, or sometimes even the back pain, or nausea, or, or they, they feel like vomiting. So the symptoms may differ. But of course, whenever you are in doubt, uh, and you have a symptoms that uh, don't seem to go away, I think it's always best to seek medical attention. Okay. Now, this was a newspaper clipping from the Straits Times, I think now about four, four or five years ago. Uh, as you know, before the pandemic, uh, I think every year, Stan Chart always organizes this uh, uh, marathon, the full marathon and, and the half marathon. And invariably, we always have casualties, either from heat exhaustion, uh, but sadly, sometimes we get fatalities uh, from these uh, strenuous uh, recreational activities yeah uh, in that particular year i think it was 2016 or 2017 there was uh, this unfortunate young apparently fit gentleman from britain 29 years of age only who collapsed i think about a kilometer from the finishing line and they tried to revive him but they couldn't and eventually he passed on so I was uh, fortunately or unfortunately called up by the Straits Times the next day uh, to give my opinion on, on this. So let me just blow up the screen here so you can see my big name there. Yeah. So they actually consulted me and uh, the key message that I wanted to, to bring forth was that preparation, pre-marathon preparation is key. And how do we uh, prepare? I think a proper heart health screen is warranted, especially if uh, you have been um, sedentary most of your life and then midlife crisis sets in and you decide to go for a marathon. I think it's always important to have a proper heart health screen. There are three basic tests which I alluded to uh, in another article in the Straits Times. Um, number one of which is the electrocardiogram or ECG, which is basically a two second snapshot of your heart rhythm. Um, it is inexpensive to do, it is safe to do, fast to do, uh, but of course it's not the most accurate of tests in picking up all heart diseases, but it gives the cardiologist uh, a little glimpse as to what possibly may be a problem. Second test is the treadmill test, which is like an ECG test, but a continuous ECG monitoring whilst you are exercising on a treadmill test, on a treadmill machine. Uh, this gives us further information uh, as to whether there are narrowing or blockages of your arteries or significant plug built up in your heart arteries. Yeah. Uh, Final relatively inexpensive test to do is an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. Again, gives us lots of information, though not complete, but gives us a lot of information as to the heart structure, the heart strength, the pumping strength, whether the valves are, are working well or not. Uh, you'd be surprised that we sometimes pick up uh, congenital heart problems that may potentially lead to another tragedy like this uh, in someone who, who didn't know he had that condition. Yeah. So these three basic tests 
uh, relatively inexpensive to do and gives us quite a lot of information. Um, I would advise uh, anyone or males, men above the age of 40 or women above the age of 50, uh, if you're thinking of embarking on certain activities like this, strenuous activities like this, I would suggest you come for a proper heart health screen. Uh, make sure that you are your heart, your ticker is nice and healthy before you embark on these activities. Okay, so men above 40, women above 50. Uh, why there's a difference in the age group between men and women? Well, because uh, females, before they are menopause, their female hormones, progesterone and estrogen, they sort of protect the heart from uh, developing early heart disease. So they sort of, uh, they're protected by their hormones. But once menopause sets in, uh, then their risk for developing heart disease equals that of men, yeah? Okay, so maybe just another uh, video presentation of what Heart Health Screen is about. Now, this is a, a real life example of a patient of mine uh, who actually went for the actual same uh, stand chart marathon in 2017. Um, he initially, before the marathon, he actually came for a heart screening. He did a treadmill test, uh, which was very abnormal, but he did not know the result of the treadmill tests, but embarked on the, uh, the marathon nevertheless. Fortunately, he wasn't the second uh, fatal statistic uh, that, that event, uh, but he came back a week after the marathon. I showed him his abnormal exercise treadmill test result and said, you have to do an invasive coronary angiogram soon, which is what you see here on your screen. And uh, I did that the next day. And this is what we found a very tight narrowing right in the middle of this, uh, uh, uh artery. So you can imagine your your um, heart arteries on the angiogram like a, a water pipe, yeah? So blood flows inside this water pipe, uh, which turns out to be black in color on the angiogram, yeah? So when you see a little uh, narrowing there, you can see that this is because the inside of the water pipe is being choked by plaque and therefore the flow of the blood is impeded and therefore you get this uh, narrowing that you see here. So what I did was coronary angioplasty, which is basically putting in the stent, uh, which again, I will allude to again what it, it is about. But basically what I did was putting a stent and this is how it looks uh, like after the stent has been put in. The passageway is now opened up completely and blood is now flowing freely and fully. Yeah. So before, after, okay. Another example of another patient, again, not so, uh, Fortunate in this case, uh, this patient was diabetic and hypertensive. He was a chronic smoker. Uh, he presented to the emergency department with uh, severe chest pain, very typical uh, heart attack kind of symptoms, severe crushing chest pain, breaking out in profuse sweating, blood pressure was low. He was having a, a massive heart attack. And this is what I found on the uh, angiogram. And you can see here, your artery is supposed to be a little thick black, tube that runs down here like that, but here is completely cut off because it is completely occluded or blocked off by a blood clot uh, resulting, resulting in a sudden cessation or, uh, of blood flowing down and therefore that's what we call a heart attack. So what I, what I did as a 24-7 uh, plumber, so to speak, 
I basically tried, uh, went in to open up the choked artery as quickly as I could. And this is how it looks like after with the open uh, passageway, okay? So before and after. So of course, we all don't want to end up like the previous patient on the table with a heart attack. Yeah? We want to know how to prevent a heart attacks from happening. And this simple diagram basically shows the key, uh, the key ingredients of uh, a healthy diet, uh, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, um, uh, basically a balanced kind of diet to, to reduce your risk for heart attacks. So speaking on this topic of diet, I, I know some of you will have questions about the DASH diet, the keto diet, and whether these are of any use. My advice to all my heart patients is that um, all food classes, your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fats, sugars, everything, they are all essential for your body's building blocks. Okay, so I think common sense detects that all of these food groups are necessary for your body's nutrition, but the key is moderation. Moderation is the key. You can take any of these foodstuffs, but take it in small, moderate amounts, balance it out. And I think that's the best, easiest way of uh, having a healthy diet. Okay. Uh, but in addition to a, to a healthy diet, there are other risk factors that you need to be uh, concerned of. So besides an unhealthy diet, uh, if you have the following risk factors, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or if you smoke. Uh, of course, if you have physical inactivity and you're obese, this puts you at a higher risk for heart disease. One other risk factor that's not included here is um, genetics or family history. So a cardiologist will only consider you having a strong family history if your male uh, first degree relative, male first degree relative, meaning your father or your brother, had a heart attack before the age of 50. Yeah, if you had a father or a brother who had a heart attack before the age of 50, that is considered a strong family history for you. If your first degree female relative, meaning your mother or your sister, had a heart attack before the age of 60, then that's considered a strong family history for you. Okay, so just remember uh, family history, family risk factors, a family history of heart disease puts you at increased risk of a heart attack. In addition to these uh, following issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking history, and of course, an unhealthy diet. So heart attack prevention is as easy as uh, A, B, C, A, for avoid tobacco, B, become more active, and C, choose a good balanced uh, nutrition. Okay. Um, okay, so let me just end off by sharing a little bit more on what I do, uh, my bread and butter, which is percutaneous coronary intervention, or simply put coronary angioplasty or coronary heart stenting. Yeah. So it basically involves putting a little small tube into your uh, artery in your wrist and then treading the catheter or the tube directly to the heart and we can actually check the heart from there. So I think it might be easier if I showed you another video which will explain things a little bit better, okay? Uh, so this is how it looks like when the person is undergoing an angiogram, he's actually awake but lying there, the head is there, the wrist is here beside me and I work on the wrists, putting in the catheters and the tubes. And in front of me is the screens where there's a live uh, X-ray images of the heart, uh, the heart arteries in particular, and that's where I, I do my work, yeah. So I think it might be easier if I show you this again in another video to explain what coronary angioplasty or coronary angiogram is about. <laughs>
Okay, so that's what uh, I do as a day-to-day uh, -day basis. Um, so I'd like to uh, slowly end off again with a, uh, uh, a little advert about the comprehensive heart screens that we have in our clinics, uh, which involves not just a full physical examination, but includes your ECG, your chest X-ray, an echocardiogram, and even a CT, a CT scan of the heart. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, part of the uh, talk involves uh, COVID-19 and the heart. I uh, just want to briefly say that uh, all that I mentioned about the heart disease, uh, blockages of the heart arteries, funny arrhythmias, palpitations of the heart, these are, we, know, we now know after having seen COVID-19 for the last two years, that uh, it sort of enhances, uh, it sort of, exaggerates the responses, uh, the, exaggerates the illnesses, the heart illnesses that we see before COVID-19 even existed. So patients with pre-existing heart disease have an increased um, risk for having a worse outcome in, for their heart disease if they catch COVID-19. Yeah, uh, and The mechanisms of which are, are still in debate, uh, but generally speaking, heart attacks, if I can just uh, briefly explain. Heart attacks is when you have uh, uh, blood clots form here uh, as a result of a, um, a fissuring or cracking of this little uh, plug here. Uh, we now know that this is also an inflammatory, uh, as a result of inflammation. Uh, not just uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but if you have some form of inflammation, the risk of this plug rupture increases. And we know that uh, having a COVID-19 infection is a form of inflammation that occurs in your coronary arteries. And this might make the, uh, the incidence of uh, blood clots forming increased. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, people with pre-existing heart disease can develop uh, worse outcomes from the heart disease if they can, uh, if they get COVID-19 at the same time, okay? Um, yeah, so I, I think I'll end off here and uh, leave more time for questions, which I'm sure you all have, and I'm happy to take any questions. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.